We now shift our conversation with an actor who for more than 30 years has endeared himself to millions around the world as the ultimate tough guy with nearly 400 acting credits to his name. Danny Trejo has cemented his place as one of the most recognizable actors on the screen today. But beneath the tough exterior is a man who has overcome multiple hardships. In his new book, Trejo, My Life of Crime, Redemption in Hollywood, the actor opens up about his life behind bars and beyond. Danny joins us now from Los Angeles to talk more about it. Danny, welcome and congratulations on joining the cast of American Horror Story on FX on Hulu, which is also owned, I must say, by our ABC parent company. Thank you. As, as we mentioned before, throughout your career, you become synonymous with this tough guy, don't mess with me type of character. What made you decide to come out with a book that, that shows a completely different side? Uh, you know, I did a, they did a documentary on me called Inmate Number One, and everybody thought it, it was because I'd been in prison. <laughs> but the reality, we called it Inmate Number One because the first five years of my career, I played in, inmate number one, or bad guy, or mean Mexican dude, or uh, you know, killer. I, I never had a name, but I always liked inmate number one. And, and you mentioned the first time that you got hauled off to a police station. You were only ten years old. I remember thinking that it was well, twelve. About twelve. Yeah. You were twelve. And, you know, it's like, but they used to, they used to take you to police stations to scare you. And but what they didn't know was. The minute the fear was gone, you didn't care. First time I went to juvenile hall, I realized, okay, this ain't so bad. And and I thought Mexicans were supposed to go because all that was there was Mexican Americans, poor poor white guys and African-Americans. That was it. And let's talk about how you got your start in Hollywood. You were an addiction counselor and someone from your time in prison recognized you. What, what happened after that? You know what? I, I I I was working for a place called Western Pacific Med Corp in Glendale. I still work for them as an actor. I still work for them, and I I uh, I was we we're being extras, and uh, I was working with this one kid who had a cocaine problem, and and uh, I was kind of hanging with him, and I, we were on a movie set of a movie called Runaway Train, and. I'm standing there, and I don't have a shirt on, a big tattoo. This guy comes up and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I said, yeah. And he says, I saw you in the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. And I said, you're Eddie Bunker. And he said, uh, yeah. And we started talking. I knew this guy. And I said, what are you doing here, Eddie? And he said, I, I adapted the screenplay. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but I guess it was important. And he said... Are you still boxy? I said, no, I'm 40 years old. I don't get in the face anymore. And he said, uh, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. And I said, what's it pay? Because they were giving me 50 bucks cash. And uh, he says, 320 a day. He said, I'll take it. <laughs> I said, how bad do you want this guy beat up? You know, I thought, I thought he wanted me to beat somebody up. I, I'd, I'd have done it for another fifty bucks. And uh, and he goes, no, no, you got to be careful. This actor's real high strung. He might sock you, Danny. I said for three hundred and twenty bucks, give him a stick. And uh, and I started training Eric Roberts on a box for a movie called Runaway Train. And the director saw me, saw that I could handle Eric. I went from being hey you to. Mr. Trejo, would you like some coffee? <laughs> and now yeah. fast forward, you're one of the most recognizable Latino actors in Hollywood. You start, of course, in the movie Machete, which had Latino representation both in front and behind the cameras. But Hollywood is often criticized for not having enough productions about the largest ethnic minority in this country. Where is the disconnect? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Okay, we got plenty of Latino actors. Only problem is we don't have enough Latino executive producers. Uh -huh. So they're the people with the money. Everybody keeps, you know, blaming like different, you know, uh, uh, we need people with money to start saying, hey, let's produce some movies. You know, let's invest some money in film. And have you thought about doing that yourself? 
Absolutely. I produced a few movies. My son and my son did a film called From a Son and it was the best work I've ever done and the most emotional. And so we've been trying to, to you know, work up movies that that feature Latino, you know, not not just not just, you know, I don't want to. I, you know, I mean, we have a, a Telemundo. To, to do that, but I want to make movies with with a lot of Mexican Americans, and not just you know we got TV series that's awesome, but I don't want them just to be bad guys. You know, I mean, we could have a, a like instead of a James Bond, we could have a Juan Sanchez. Uh, Juan Sanchez, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one. It sounds Juan Sanchez. sounds very tough. I'd like I'd like to see you play that role, Mr. Sanchez. And on a lighter note, according to multiple reports, you actually own the record for most on-screen deaths out of anyone right. in Hollywood history. Is there a particular scene that, that sticks out to you as a favorite or most memorable? You know, to be killed by Robert De Niro. <laughs> It's probably the highlight of my movie career. When in heat, I ask him, you know, don't leave me like this, Holmes. And he, you know, he he puts me out of my misery. That well, everybody said that was one of the best scenes of that era, you know. And I remember talking to Bob. <laughs> I love saying that. I remember talking to Bob De Niro uh, before, and him asking me, "How do you want to play this, Danny?" And I said, I don't know, what do you think, Bob? And he said, I think you're already dead. And I kind of looked at him and said, you just got enough life in, left in you to beg me to kill you. Got it, and it worked. Yeah. It worked. Oh, I did it never. He, knew, he knows what he's talking about. Man. Danny Trejo, we thank you so much for your time. And to our viewers, remember Danny's book, Trejo, A Life of Crime, Redemption in Hollywood, is out now. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.